Previously on The Bill. It's over. No more undercover journalism for you. I'm going to leave my wife, Andrea. For you. if you fail your response course, as long as you come away with a few phone numbers. Is that it? No. Obviously, I want to pass that as well. I don't know. It's coming over. <clears throat> All right, ladies. Dan Casper, Spicer Street. Didn't I tell you? We're teamed up together. Oh, dear. How am I going to concentrate on my driving, eh? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, is that a thing for women in uniform? Why do you think I joined the police? Oh. Fast women and fast cars. You never know. You might get to satisfy one of those cravings while you're here. <clears throat> Carol Parker, I'm your instructor. Let's get one thing straight from the start. This course is not about car chases. If that's what you're here for, I suggest you leave now. Mr. Aziz, I'm Sergeant Smith from Sunhill Police Station. This is PC Dunbar. Thank you so much for coming. It's just that we didn't know what else to do. Uh, come in, please. So your father's been missing since this morning, yeah? Yeah, but we keep him locked in the house, you know, if you know it's going to be a bad day. But he was up and out before anyone was uh, awake. He's done this before? Yeah, a few times, but we've always found him. You know, uh, usually by the river, he used to work in the warehouse by the docks. And I understand your father's got diabetes as well as the Alzheimer's. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's had it for years. Never stopped him, though. Has he got a mobile phone? Yeah. Upstairs in his bedroom. My mother is worried sick. Well, the important thing is for us to find him for you, so, uh, have you got a recent picture? Uh, photo. Photo, yes. Oh, yeah, this one was uh, taken last year. Quick, over. Okay, thanks very much. I'll get it circulated. We'll give you a call as soon as we hear anything. Sarge, are you putting Laura Bryant on the search? Well, it's her patch, so yeah, what? Could you pin us up? Is this about Mr. Aziz or is this about Gabriel? Oh, Laura knows the area better than I do. So you don't want to grill her about Gabriel then, no? Well, the subject might come up. And if she happens to mention why Gabriel was taken off the call in a state, so be it. We know that Laura and Gabriel have got a history. But how's that going to prove he had anything to do with Kerry's death? Uh, I don't know. Yet. But if it means we can take something to MIT, it'll be worth it. We need evidence, not hearsay. That's not normal. Whistling while doing paperwork, you need therapy, Jim. Ken. June moved back in last night. Excellent. No wonder you're smiling, eh? No, no, no. Look, we're separate bedrooms, but we've done a bit of talking and she doesn't want to rush things. No, well, that's so understandable. You've dumped a lot on her recently, mate. She's not going to forget it overnight, is she? Well, thanks for the reminder. Look, I know it's not perfect, but it's a start. And now that she has moved back in, we can make a go of it. Get things back to how they used to be. I'm made up for you, mate. Cheers. <laughs> this is Khalid Aziz. He lives on the Coal Lane estate. He's been missing since 7 o'clock this morning without his coat. He's in the early stages of Alzheimer's and he suffers from diabetes and his next insulin shot is due very soon. I hope we're not taking any bets on his chances. Mr Aziz used to be a warehouseman down by the docks. He's been found there before, so first off, I want to concentrate our search between his house and the river. We'll widen it later if we have to. Lots of derelict buildings for him to get lost in. So, Laura, I want you to stay on the estate. Andrea, Gabriel, I want you to concentrate your search down by the river. I'll see you outside. I don't want any trouble between you and Gabriel. Why didn't you pair me with Laura? Because you've got a job to do. Sarge. Hi. Bruce, it's me. Are you avoiding me? 
Listen, I still need a bit more time to put the pieces together, but it shouldn't be much longer. Give us a call. Bye. Listen, I'm just on my way out. There's an old man with Alzheimer's going walk about. Right. I've been thinking. About? About telling Philippa this weekend. Her mother's looking after Jake, so I should be able to speak to her uninterrupted. Right. What I thought was I'd get a bit of stuff together and um, move into yours after breaking the news. Maybe that's okay. Sir? Well, it may take a bit longer than that to sort things out with Pippa. She may not want you to move out straight away. Maybe you shouldn't rush it. After telling her about us, um, I don't think she's going to want me to be in the house for another minute. I just don't want you doing something you might regret later. Look, I can't think about Philippa anymore. It's what we need now that's important. I've been living with someone I don't love. I finally got a chance to change that. Why would I wait a moment longer to be with you? One person I can trust. Something wrong? No. No, there's nothing. It's just so... You sure? If there's something you're not telling me, you know, now's the time to say it. Honestly, everything's fine. Don't worry. Pam, can you take that to CID for me? Yeah, sure. Roger, meet me in the yard in two minutes. There's an incident in Dillard Plaza. You want us to work together? Oh, that's not a problem, is it? No, I just you thought... You see, Valentine, we're at work now. I'm your sergeant. You do as I tell you. In the yard, two minutes. got it back after the first spin. The second one's always worse. Especially in the back. This one think his luck's in. Can't help it if you're drawn to me. Must be your animal magnetism. <laughs> Give it a rest, PC Johansson. You're here to learn to drive. You don't want to go back to Sun Hill with a fail, do you? No. Look at the face on him. It's only been five minutes. I think he'd been waiting for an hour. Well, that's Gabriel for you. Yeah, well, he won't let me forget about it for the rest of the day now. It's not like he's Mr. Perfect. I think that's one way of putting it. Yeah. I bet you get plenty of stories from his days when he worked in the local lane estate. Yeah, anyway, better go look for Khalid. But the freezing out there. Yeah. Sorry, got held up. Better late than never. What are you doing on this course, PC Johansson? Sorry? There are plenty of officers who give their eye teeth to be here, and they bust a gut to pass. As a probationer, you've got more to prove than most, but I don't think you're even trying. Did you think it would be a bit of a laugh? A bit of a skive off work? Of course not. I really want to pass. I'm trying, honest. If your commentary isn't first rate, you can forget the final drive. Carol? You were dying to do a handbrake turn in. But you're a secret speed freak as well. A pursuit isn't about speed, it's about safety. I reckon an industrial estate's the only place I'm going to get to drive after this. Hey, some of us are born to drive. And some of us are women. She was having a right go at me. I'd left all that behind when I finished school. I can't fail. June Ackland's going to be expecting me to mess up, and there's no way I'm giving her the satisfaction. June, it's all women at Sun Hill. There's plenty of men, and not all of them think a woman's place is in the passenger seat. I don't either. It's the back seat. Carol said, if I mess up on the commentary, there's no way I'm doing the final drive. It's just talking about what you're doing and seeing while you're driving. And if there's one thing you're good at, it's talking. Oh, 
picture. What do you think they're playing at? Anyone could have seen it. I don't know what you're talking about. The rose on my locker. Rose? Yeah, come on. Who else would have left it there? You're a married woman, too. Never thought it might be from your husband. Why would I leave something like that in your locker? Do you think I want people to find out what happened? Oh, come on. It was just a kiss. It was just a bit of fun, all right? I don't want people thinking I'm the kind of bloke who splits up marriages. Don't flatter yourself. My marriage was over long ago. Does Jim know this? I'm just waiting for the right moment to tell him. Well, maybe kissing other blokes in the middle of the station yard isn't the best way to break the news. I, I don't need your advice on how to end my marriage, thank you. Oh, I know. And you weren't exactly complaining. I wasn't forcing myself on you. What is the matter with you? Anyone would think you want to get caught. Aziz used to work near here before he was ill. His son reckons he sometimes comes this way when he wanders off. But his insulin's way overdue now, so we'll need to find him before it gets dark. Sad, isn't it? He doesn't know whether he's in Canley or Karachi. Maybe he's better off in a home where he can be properly looked after. 943 from 54. Yes, Sarge. Any sign of him? No, nothing yet, Sarge. Where are you? Uh, yeah, we're just approaching the bridge near the trading estate. OK, well, I'm not too far from there myself. You two take a bank each, and if he's not down there, we move on to the docks. Copy that, Sarge. Just think of the man hours we spent looking for this guy. What well, you think is a waste of time? Most of the job's a waste of time. Admin, sorting out domestics. A woman walks into a station with two black eyes, says she's walking by the door, and the guy's complaining that his knuckles are bruised. Yeah, I suppose. Don't you want to go back to the old days when nobody would blink an eye if you dealt out a bit of justice yourself? Not now, of course. There's always someone ready to blow the whistle on you. Now, when I was in the Navy, we used to look out for each other. And the police, well, you never know who's going to stab you in the front or the back. Which side do you want? Uh, yeah, you go that way, I'll go this way. Sit there. What's this all about? Ask him! I'm Sergeant Ackland. This is PC Valentine. We're from Sun Hill. You are? Uh, Stuart Wilkinson. I'm the MD here. Mm -hmm. There was no need to call the police. It's nothing. That was my wife. Yeah, well, not for long. No one my solicitor sees this. I got this on my email this morning, and so did everyone else in the office. Him and his secretary. Well, fortunately for her, she's on holiday. Well, you're not worried she'll pick up somebody younger, someone better looking, because it wouldn't be hard. It was over. I told you. Hey, Mrs. Wilkinson, can I have a look, please? Look, do you have any idea who might have sent you this? Anyone who might want to hurt you? He's done a pretty good job of it already. The point of the commentary is so that I can hear what you're thinking identifying conditions and prioritising any hazards you might be facing. Everybody thinks responding to an incident is about speed. It's not. Safety is the key. You're no good to anyone if you don't get there in one piece. OK, you can start your commentary whenever you like. Driving within the speed limit, uh, keeping a good distance from the car in front. Uh... BC Caspo. You've had your left indicator on for the last half mile. It must have been quite a shock for you. Shell's been with us for years. Since Stuart and I set the company up. And you didn't have a clue that they were having an affair? Nobody wants to believe the person they love's cheating on them, do they? I suppose everyone else knew. God, I bet they were all laughing at me behind my back. You know, this kind of malicious communication is actually an offence. We could go on ahead and prosecute if that's what you wanted. It just doesn't make sense. It's Stuart might not love me anymore, but he loves his money. And he knows what a divorce will cost him. Why would he risk that? And if it wasn't him, it was only Michelle. 
I suppose that makes more sense. Her wanting me to know. Uh, I thought you said she was on holiday. I've been away a fortnight. Caribbean cruise. And it was me wondering how she could afford it. Well, all right. I mean, if it wasn't her, does anybody else have an axe to grind? You need a swipe card to get into the building. Another code for our offices. Then a password for Stuart's computer. Even I don't know it. But as his secretary, Michelle might. Turning left, bus stop on the right. People are waiting. So that must mean a bus is probably coming towards us. Van parked on the left. Slowing down, gently moving forward and around the van. See one pedestrian. Do you want to stop and check him out further? Or concentrate on what you're supposed to be doing? Sorry. Approaching a bend. Slowing into the bend, maintaining and faster out. <gasps> I didn't see it! Stay there. Okay, can you get him in the car? Yeah, no worries. It just ran out. Is it dead? No, it's just injured. But we'll have to make a detour to the vets. Oh, it wasn't your fault. <laughs> Sorry. An emergency stop to avoid a dog. Would you call that putting the safety of your passengers first? Come on, let's go. Bit of light bedtime reading. <laughs> yeah, that's lasted a week. Alan Kennedy. Oh, the serial rape trial. Starts tomorrow. Um, you wouldn't be interested in a bit of malicious communication then. There you go. Jim's your man. Yeah, but is there anyone else? Sorry, Jim. Well, if anyone says you've been a great help, they're lying. Um, Jim, malicious communication. Rather you than me. Do you know what a pain this will be? But as soon as it's you, who's the happy couple? Stuart Wilkinson, husband of the woman who received it, along with everyone else who works with him, and that's his secretary. I mean, why do people take pictures like that? I mean, it's bad enough any holiday snaps. But at least you're wearing some. Uh, uh, the woman who received it, Ruth Wilkinson, she runs a financial services company with her husband. She and her husband came back from a late lunch. She checks her messages and finds this, sent from an anonymous email account. Apparently the only people who even knew about the photograph were Stuart Wilkinson and the secretary. Michelle Copeland, but she's away on holiday. Well, didn't anyone ever tell him about doing it on your own doorstep? Anyway, can we leave that with you? Yeah, don't worry, I'll get Ken to do the donkey work. Um, Roger, can you... Give us a minute. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Thanks. Jim, I'm busy. Oh, no. Did you get it? The rose. I just wanted to say how happy I am that you've moved back in again. Yeah, well, there was no need to, but I thought that we weren't going to rush things. Well, we're not. And I just saw it and... I am allowed to show my wife how special she is, aren't I? Kids, they could be so ungrateful. Look, he hit me! All yours. Oh, God! Come on, see you. Mr. Aziz, it's going to be okay. You come along with me. Come on, fella. Up you get. Come on. That's it. Okay, mate. Come on. I've not seen him, Gov. We well, should be in on this. He's giving evidence as well. I'm sure the DI's prepared. We just want to make sure we're all singing from the same hymn sheet. 
You know who Kennedy's got defending him. Well, even Michael Sherwood's not going to get Kennedy off this one. Not with the evidence we've got. He may have retracted his confession, but our case is watertight. That's right, the 1835 from Heathrow. Can you confirm she didn't return on the earlier flight? OK, thanks for your help. Well, that rules out Michelle Copeland. Holiday Company confirmed she flew out of schedule and is not due back for another week. Well, she could have emailed it from the Caribbean. Uh, unlikely. According to their IT support staff, the photo was saved in Stuart Wilkinson's personal file. And he's the only one who knows the password. Yeah. Any luck with the email address? No, I'm waiting for the internet service provider to get back to me. How do we end up with this one, eh? These cases are all the same. You put in all the legwork to track down the offender and then the recipient doesn't want to prosecute. Yeah, that's a waste of time. Look, give me the SP on the ISP ASAP. I'll be on my mobile. OK, mate. Right. Big day tomorrow. Final drives. Leela, very professional. You just need to be a bit more confident on the commentary. Dan, as long as you don't keep thinking you're the best driver in the world, when you're not even the best in the car, you'll be fine. And Amber... Well, you've had your wake-up call. If you want to pass tomorrow, you're going to have to start taking this whole thing a lot more seriously. You know the theory. Just make sure you put it into practice. Good luck. Oh, one last thing. Early night. I don't want all my good work and yours drowning in a river of alcohol. Why not? It's not like I could get any worse. Or, I know, maybe I could kill a dog on my final drive rather than just maim one. You were just unlucky, that's all. And the vet said the dog will be up and running in a couple of days. Do better tomorrow. Oh, get off me! He's brutality! Save it for your statement, in there. Go! You is strangling me. I can't breathe. Yeah, yeah. I hardly touched you. You were using unreasonable force. I know my rights. Your commissioner will have to pay me loads of compote and you'll lose your job for this. Fine. I'm going to lose my job. But first, I've got to get you processed. So such your mouth. Stop wriggling and answer the sergeant's questions. Did you see what Sarge. No. But I think we can guess. What are you saying? We split up. And the next thing I see is Joey with a split lip and Gabriel with blood on his hands. Am I the only one doing any work around here? OK, Doctor. Thanks a lot. You've been beating up the prisoners again? Oh, it's just some young lad had a run in with a wall down by the canal. Oh, Jim. How do you fancy dinner with Roberto's? I've checked and they can fit us in tonight. They've even got a table oh, for Jim, it. this is all a bit too soon. OK, whatever you say. Um, some other time, maybe. I'll catch you later. Look, you might be ready for romantic walks in the park, but I'm not. Too much has happened. I can't ignore that. Yeah, I know. One step at a time. That's what we agreed. OK? Sergeant, how's Mr. Aziz? They're going to keep him in overnight for observation, but he should be fine to come home in the morning. Oh, that's good. Um, can I have a word? Yeah. So, what about Gabriel? Are you going to suspend him? What for? Well, you hit Joey. You saw it. He can't carry on working after that. Do you seriously think he'd still be at work if I saw him assault someone? The kid fell. Gabriel didn't touch him. He's saying that he did. Yeah, you didn't honestly believe the little toe rag, did you? I mean, he's brought in here nearly every week with the same story. Police brutality. The copper hit me. I'm going to sue. He's just trying to pull a fast one. Look. I know you want to get Gabriel, but stop trying to force it. I've told you, MIT won't be interested unless you've got proof. I know, but we're running out of options. He'll slip up eventually. They always do. I don't have eventually. What are you going on about? You can't just put a deadline on something like this. Well, why not? Look, you don't understand. I can't get on with the rest of my life until this man is put behind bars.
You don't mind if I just get a few things sorted, do you? Uh, had to close the office. It's kind of hard to concentrate there. If you don't mind me asking you a few questions while you work. No, 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 carry on. Oh, excuse me. Ken. Okay. Thanks, mate. Uh, we've checked with the internet service provider and the address that sent the photo isn't registered. So we can't trace it. Have you got any idea who might want your wife to know about the affair? I've got a clue. Could you have sent it accidentally, you know? You couldn't think of a way to tell your wife, so you forced the issue. <laughs> this house, my business, the car. My wife owns half of everything. Got any idea how much this divorce is going to cost me? And the only other person who even knew about the photograph was Michelle. And she's on holiday. And you ended the relationship with her to stay with your wife? And the boys. Whatever problems there are between me and Ruth, it's not the boys' fault. Now, you mentioned that you hadn't looked at the photo in weeks. Yeah, not since Michelle and I were together. Why? Well, if you right click on a file, then you can tell when it was last opened. And if you haven't looked at it for weeks, that's what the computer can tell us. Last Thursday night? That's impossible. It was our wedding anniversary. Ruth and I went away. We left the office early. Ask her. Just boiled? Yeah. <sighs> now, I know Joey is notorious, but he convinced me. The way he was shouting, I mean, he sounded like he was hurt. Maybe he was. <sighs> and just because he's cried wolf loads of times before, how do we know he wasn't telling the truth this time? How do we know it's not police brutality? I mean, there were those rumours about Gabriel a while ago. Ah, listen to me, I'm being ridiculous. No, you're not. How do you mean? It's not that ridiculous. When Deborah worked the coal lane, he didn't like the way some people were getting away with things. If there was a drug dealer, a loan shark, any trouble like that, he'd deal with them. So what are you saying? There was a paedophile living on the estate. We couldn't prove anything, so Gabriel beat him to a pulp. After that, he got other people to do his dirty work. He had his own group of hired thugs. So that's why you had him taken off the estate? Just got out of control. If Gabriel decided somebody needed sorting out, he'd deal with them. It was just like all this power went to his head. He didn't know where to stop. What's this? Cozy little girly chat. Actually, uh, we're just leaving. No, she's one vodka and orange. I hope that's a double. I can't believe just when I got June up from where I won her, I go and mess everything up. I'm going to be right back where I started with her moaning on at me all the time. It mightn't be that bad. What a chance of you hitting a dog two days in a row. Watch it, Amber. He's trying to show you his supportive side. Stick to cave, man. Amber doesn't do sensitive. <laughs> you think I'm trying to chat her up? <laughs> Talk about misunderstood. I ain't even noticed I've been teamed up with the best looking women on the course. <laughs> <laughs> What's she doing here? Great. That's just what we need. Can't exactly relax with Carol looking over our shoulders. I was going to try my luck on her, but one of the guys back at the Nick tipped me off that she's, uh Catches the other bus, if you know what I mean. Carol, are you sure about that? Hiya. You lot won't even get to start your final drive tomorrow if you've been drinking. Of course not. We're all on soft drinks. We're taking your advice and getting an early night. We just thought we'd unwind for a couple of hours first. Get our heads in the right frame of mind for tomorrow. Good. I told you it was a silly idea to come to the bar over the road. Oh, relax, we're not doing anything wrong. Anyway, this gives me the chance to have a little chat with Carol. I 
don't believe her. Don't tell me I'm a bats for the other team. Yep. She's trying to get Carol on side. <laughs> don't you mean on her back? So, uh, are you only attracted to lesbians? What do you think? <laughs> well, that's great. So, so you're going to fax that through now? Thank you very much. And bye. The security company keeps records of when every card swiped at your office. They're faxing through a list now of cards used on Thursday night. Apparently, you all have individual codes. Yeah, yeah. Mine's uh, 007. Ruth thought it was funny. Hilarious. Oh, don't start, Ruth. Tom doesn't need this. I'm DC Jim Carver, Son Hill. I'm investigating what's happened. He had an affair with his secretary. End of story, end of marriage. How many times, Ruth? I'd finished it. I chose you and the boys. That line might have worked once, Stuart. Even twice, but not a third time. I packed some of your things. I want you out of here tonight. Tom. That's why I finished it. I didn't want to hurt you and Warren. I still don't. You should have thought of that before, shouldn't you? Look, I said I'm sorry. How many times do you want me to say it? Ruth! Stuart, I am not prepared to discuss that anymore. Listen, Ruth, it's over, I promise you. It's finished. I'm not seeing it. Stuart, go away! Easy to get into your dad's computer, was it? He's not my dad. He's my stepdad. How did you get the password? It was dead easy. Didn't even need two ghosts, just typed in Warren. Warren? My brother, Stuart's real son. Golden boy. What about your mum? This has probably hurt her more than your stepdad. She knows he's had loads of affairs. She keeps going back to him. I thought. If everyone knew, then she'd have to kick him out. <laughs> Why didn't you just tell me? Or, or anything. He was only doing it for my sake. That, of course, is the beauty of malicious communications cases. If the victim doesn't want to take it any further, we don't have to. No matter how much work we've put into it. Still sticking to orange juice? A bit of Dutch courage never hurt anyone. I'm not seriously thinking of chatting her up. I mean, she can't help anymore now. It's not like she's going to be the one testing us. No, but she might be able to put a good word for me in with the examiner. So you're leaving me and Leela to look after ourselves? It's not that. It's just... You must have seen the way she looks at you. I thought you'd appreciate me leaving you. Don't tell her I told you. Sometimes she's so shy, she just does my head in. This isn't a wind-up. Just trying to do you both a favour. Two orange juices, please. Ladies, do you mind if I join you just for a sec? No, that's fine. What, can I say hi? Come in. I just thought you'd like to know it was the stepson what done it. Oh. My guess is they won't want to prosecute then. You guess right. Ah, uh, look. I was thinking of heading down the pub for a swift half. Can I buy you one? A sort of bury the hatchet drink. Uh, no, I don't think so. But thank you anyway. Oh. We should get a sunstrip made for the windscreen tomorrow with Amber and Carol on it. She's practicing a commentary for the final drive. Making full eye contact now. Conditions perfect, no obstructions ahead.
looks like she's got herself into a bit of a dead end. <laughs> At least she's keeping her engine well off. <laughs> no matter what Amber thinks, Carol's not going to compromise herself like that. Must be pretty important to her. At least she knows how to let her hair down. Meaning I don't. I've worked hard to get here, and I'm not about to throw it all away. Got to relax sometimes, though. I'll tell you what. Next time you're in Canley, I'll buy you a curry and a few pints, and we'll see what you're made of. I'll hold you to that. Always busy, busy, busy. Well, that's what I get paid for. Why are you on my case all the time? Sorry, I'm not. You and Laura were talking about me earlier. Gabriel, don't flatter yourself. MIT don't have me down as a liar. And they're the ones who count. Not a PC with a B in her bonnet. Just because they couldn't pin Kerry's rape on you, doesn't mean that they believed you. No one's buying that, Andrew, so stop flogging it. And if I've got a reputation to live up to... Are you threatening me? No, sweetheart. <laughs> I'm promising. Unless you keep your nose out. Hello? What? Chip? You certainly know how to pick your moments. I've been trying to get a hold of you all day and then you just show up outside the station. Are you trying to expose me? Indulge in myself. You've eaten enough meals in the news canteen. Better than there, is it? What do you want, Bruce? I want to know about this massive scoop you're working on. All in good time. Well, I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise by giving away the best bits, now would I? Come on, Andrea. You can at least tell me what it's about. A wee clue. Plenty other stories waiting to become headline news. But none of them are written by your favourite, most talented undercover reporter. And none of them have inside knowledge of the biggest scandal ever to hit Sun Hill. True. But I'm an editor first. So I pick the best story for the day. And no amount of batting your eyelids is going to influence that. A deep desire to help the community. Well, that's what it says on my application. Talking truth, though, I fancy the action. What about you? Deep desire to help the community. Really? I'd have had you down as a career cop. You're telling me you're not interested in climbing the ladder to superintendent? Well, Finished my drink yet? So, uh, you and Carol? Is it love? <laughs> Fat chance. She's gone off with her girlfriend. It's my last chance of passing tomorrow. Maybe you should concentrate on using your driving skills like the rest of us. I get it. I pulled out all my best techniques from her and she just didn't like it. What's wrong with her? Just have to cuddle up to a nice bottle of vodka back at our room, innit? Your husband is an investigative genius. Yes, I heard. And they're not going to prosecute. OK, well, he's not only a genius, but he is also a chef extraordinaire. And tonight, I'm going to cook you the best meal you've ever had. And before you say a word, no buts. 
But, Jim, we have talked about this. OK, OK, look, I'm not rushing you. It's only me or we don't have to talk about anything. But I'm not going to take no for an answer. Well, yes, OK. I'll see you later. Night, June. Night. Oh, um, Roger. Are you still on for that drink tonight? Well, yeah. What changed your mind? You're right. We should uh, put what happened behind us. Well, great. I'll pick you up from your office in five minutes. Yeah, fine. Sarge? I know I might have been jumping to conclusions about Gabriel hitting Joey, but I wasn't as far off as you think. Laura spilled the beans. Now, when Gabriel was working on the Coldling estate, instead of dealing with criminals through the proper channels, he had his own brand of justice. Yeah, but nothing was ever proved. If he didn't like what someone was up to, he wouldn't bother arresting them or anything. He'd just get them beaten up. Well, just because Laura's confirmed it doesn't mean to say we've got any evidence, does it? But doesn't this remind you of someone else? Someone whose victims appear to be guilty of one thing or another, but were then dealt with before it could get to court. The sniper. Oh, now you're clutching the straws. Smithy, he's just threatened me. Now, he knows I'm digging. He's obviously worried about what I might find. In there. So there are some similarities. What does that prove? Wait, that's not all. If you check the list of Gabriel's victims and the list of Jason Hardy's victims, the same names crop up too many times for it to be a coincidence. Hang on, that's a bit of a leap, isn't it? From slapping around a few lowlifes to having them shot. And what about Kerry? She was one of the sniper's victims, but she doesn't exactly fit into your theory, does she? So it doesn't fit as neatly as I'd like, but there is definitely a pattern. OK, maybe there's a bit of a pattern, but it's coincidence. Where's your evidence? If there was a link between Gabriel and the sniper, MIT would have found it by now. I know, but there must be some aspect of Gabriel's life that MIT don't know about. <sighs> See, there might be one thing that they haven't looked into. His family. This isn't exactly common knowledge. Cool. Gabriel's mum is June Ackland. Sorry? I don't know how it helps, if it helps even. He's June's son? I, I don't understand. Why the secret? Well, I've got no idea. I'm not even supposed to know myself. Now, this wasn't exactly legal, so you have got to keep your gob shut. Yeah, yeah. Gina got hold of Gabriel's birth certificate. PC Dunbar can I have a word. Um, can I wait, sir? No. Look, if there's a problem with an officer on my relief. Not now, Smithy. doing it speaking to me like that and to think I was the one who had to convince you my motives for living together were genuine sorry what are your motives Neil I haven't got a clue what you're talking about I saw you before with a man <sighs> whoever he was there's no need to be jealous I don't feel so much jealous it's stupid I recognized him Bruce Malcolm, editor of the Daily News. You're the one who's been leaking these stories to him, aren't you? Aren't you? Go on. Tell me I'm wrong. I've seen you with him before. I've seen his name 
on your phone. I can't believe I didn't realise. Neil, no. I loved you. I trusted you. And all the time you were feeding stories to the Daily News. Please, just listen to you me. You were using me. You were using me. We were going to move in together. And you only wanted me for my inside knowledge. That's not true. If you would How just let me... How much did you? How much? Whatever it is, I hope it's worth it. Neil, I'm not the League. I'm the journalist. I'm a reporter. And I have been all along. Next time on The Bill. Oh, no! You couldn't tell the truth about me because you still love me. If I so much as get a sniff of anything racist coming out of you, you are out of it, do you understand? Neil, please, wait. There is another way. 